Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone here today. Uh, it's an exciting time to be at Blackwater Falls State Park. Um, you know, we've got it. We, we've we've dealt with a lot as a state over the last uh, several months, and and it's nice uh, to come together like this and celebrate a lot of the victories that, that we've had. And I'm going to get an opportunity to tell you about some of the things that the, the impact that this guy sitting beside me has had, not only on. West Virginia State Parks, but on West Virginia as a whole. Um, but I want to welcome him as well as you here today. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about a lot of exciting things. But uh, before we do that, I'd, I'd like to introduce uh, the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Can y'all please sit down? Thank you. Uh, let me just say this, that... Uh, I left my mask over there in the car. Y'all need to run and get that for me. You know, <clears throat> but, uh, I, you know, I see you wonderful ladies here, and I understand a bunch of your buddies, and you're staying in a cabin together and everything, and, and, all, and I think you're from Buchanan. Is that right? Fantastic. That's really good stuff. You know, <clears throat> I'm just going to hold it for right now. But, uh, you know, the the incredibly unfortunate thing is that this pandemic it hit us out of nowhere did it not and really and truly it's taken a lot a lot a lot of our loved ones and we should uh, we should absolutely keep all those in our thoughts and prayers in every way you know uh, I think I see one of our senators out here and, and you know maybe not but uh, I can't tell who you are in your mask and everything <laughs> But, but nevertheless, uh, uh, <clears throat> I, I go back to the COVID situation. You know, West Virginia's numbers are fabulous, and we should be very, very proud of what we've done. You know, you've listened to the guidelines, and we have absolutely pitched almost a perfect game compared to all the surrounding states that are all around us. But the perfect game still has 300-plus people that we've lost. And that is absolutely something that we should all hold dear to our hearts because those families and those absolute great friends and loved ones and great West Virginians have been so meaningful to us. And the sad part about it is, for the most part, the people that we've lost are the older people that have given us the wisdom over all the years. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I can't get away from that because every day I go in and I read not names, because we don't want to read names, but I read their ages and the counties that they're in, and uh, it's just tough. That's just all there is to it. But, you know, today, like uh, Steve McDaniel, a fabulous in individual, and Chelsea Ruby, and both those are beyond superstars. You know, Steve's running all of, all of our DNR and doing all the, all the different facets of that, and Chelsea's our tourism, and so... So if you just step back from this and just think, and this is really simple. You see, I'm never going to be a politician. I'm going to speak to you just like you would be in my house, and I'm going to speak to you from my heart. I'm not going to speak to you from a bunch of notes. I'm going to speak to you from my heart. I would tell you just this. The reason politicians oftentimes don't get something done is because the bureaucracy is so big that in order to keep the engine of the bureaucracy running, they've got to just kick the can down the road. And they don't really want to have absolute solutions, but you see, I want to have solutions, and I want to have results, and it's different. It really is different. You see, if you just step back, all you got to do is just step back and look around here and look how fabulous and how beautiful this place is right here, right here on, in West Virginia, right here on this wonderful planet. And then why don't you just step back and say, well, wait a minute, wait just a minute. You know, for God's sakes of living, we have the greatest people, we have the greatest resources, we're within a rock's throw of two-thirds of the population of the country. Absolutely, we have the most un unbelievable seasons and the most unbelievable beauty. So for God's sakes of living, why in the world can't we make this go? 
And a lot of the reasons is because we're sitting out here and sitting inside because we never took the time to become really proud of our own pond. I mean, when it really boils right down to it, we're doing nearly $5 million worth of renovations here. We're doing stuff all across our state. We're absolutely doing it as we make our parks better and show the world just how proud we are of what we have, lo and behold, they come. And they come in droves, don't they? And then, as I believe with all my soul, you know, I read a chapter in the Bible every night, no matter what, every single night. And, you know, it just the other day, like two days ago, here's what I read. I was reading... In a, in, 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 about a situation to where the basically said that the Bible is your guide. And then right behind that, it said, times will be dangerous and they'll be treacherous. Well, just think about this message to me. Then it said, the climb will basically suck all the energy out of you. And it will become lonely. But, it said, but remember that it won't be as lonely as you think because many, more than you can imagine, will be watching you and will be watching you as an example. And then it went on to say that keep climbing because God will give you your lifeline. And then it said in the end, Keep climbing. It's the only way to the peak. Well, it's the only way to really achieve the top of the mountain. And then the last thing, it said, keep climbing, keep climbing, and you will achieve, and you will get this done. So I would say, I don't know how a message could have possibly been more directed right at me you see, I'm a firm believer wholeheartedly, and I don't want to sound like Reverend Jim because I make lots of mistakes, you know, but I, I'm a firm believer that God moves in our lives every day, and a coincidence, the definition of coincidence should be an everyday occurrence in which God chooses to rem remain anonymous because that's the way it is. Now, and right here, right now, is a perfect example of that. You have great West Virginians and these two beautiful people right here. And you have great West Virginians and all of y'all. And somebody put us here to say, let's make a difference. Let's do something. Let's become really proud of who we are and our pond. And that's what we're doing inside. That's what we're doing in all of our parks, all across our state. And lo and behold, you know, we are exploding with business within our parks. These beautiful ladies right here. On and on and on. So really and truly, at the end of the day, I am proud. I am really, really proud. I'm proud to be your governor. It's an honor to be your governor at really, really, really tough times. A lot of people could say, oh, my gosh, what in the world? How could I have ended up the governor with the COVID pandemic? How in the world could I have ended up, but I am really honored that I ended up as your governor there. We're going to get through this, and we're going to continue to do greatness all over the state. And as we do, more and more and more people are going to come, and more and more and more stuff and opportunities are going to sprout up for us, the greatest people in my book, the very greatest. So it's a real honor to be here with you. And, uh, I'm dancing around on this stool a lot and everything. I've really got a hip that is going completely crazy, and and uh, and I've got to get it replaced. And and with this election and everything that's going on, I can't do it right now. But uh, but I'm telling you, this sucker hurts. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I thank you so much for putting up with me, and thank you for much for so much for having me. Thank you, Governor. Um, now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing here, but also, he never does it, but I'm going to toot his horn a little bit. Um, I didn't come from state government. When he interviewed me for the job four years ago, he told me basically what I've said a, a dozen times in these interviews. He said, I want you to get with Chelsea Ruby, and I want you all to tell West Virginia's story. 
Well, we got together and we started looking at our parks. Our parks were built, they started in the 30s and they built them through the 70s. And in West Virginia, we have, we have a great history of, of building things, but we don't have a really good history of taking care of what we build. I went back to governor, I said, governor, I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer. I said, but we need help. I said, I've got tens of millions of dollars worth of, of uh, maintenance, overdue maintenance that, that we just don't have the money to do. He said, well, you find a way to pay for it and I'll support, we'll get it fixed. So as I stand here today, and he knows this, this gentleman, with his backing, we've been able to invest $100 million in your West Virginia State Parks in the last four years. And I think that's phenomenal. Right? And, and, and one of the things that, that we do is that we, and Chelsea's going to talk about it, is we like to track to see how well we're doing. Um, when, when we got here, uh, you know, we got about 7 million visitors in West Virginia State Parks throughout the year just in the month of August. And Governor, normally July and, and October are our biggest months. But there's 1.8 million people in West Virginia. In the month of August, we had 529,000 cars visit West Virginia State Parks. And WVU tells us that that's an average of 3.2 people in every car. So we had the entire population of West Virginia visit West Virginia State Parks. And Governor, I don't think that's ever happened. So, so what we're doing here today, Blackwater Lodge and the cabins were built in the 50s. And we really didn't do a lot of, 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 of maintenance to them over the, the last 70 years. You see this beautiful, uh, I don't even know what to call this thing here. We just built this, Governor, as part of the bomb project. There used to be plexiglass doors there. So now when people come to ski, porte right? Is that what you say? I got it right. But we did this, and it, you can't even tell. It looks like it was here from the beginning. So what we've done up to date is we've remodeled all your cabins. We've put, we put money into the, we're putting money into the sled run, which we sell out our, our sled. We have people come from Florida last year, all over the country to sled ride in West Virginia. We're going to be remodeling all the, all the, uh, the lodge rooms, all the, the dining facilities. And down the road at Canaan Valley, we've remodeled all those cabins. Uh, we're putting in, you know, sewage treatment plants and, and water lines. They age. A lot of them are 50, 60 years old. We were, we're replacing all that. At the end of the day, what we spent so far is a little over $12 million. We have other projects in the hopper, and if we can find the money, we're going to do that as well. But, you know, he talked about we should be proud of our, of our pond. Well, we've always been proud of West Virginia State Parks. You see these wonderful people in these green uniforms. They're, they're what I call lifers. Most of them have worked in the West Virginia State Parks their whole life, and they were proud when I got here. But when I talked to them today about all the money that our administration's been able to put in the park system, you just see their face light up. Because, yeah. So, so I want to thank you, Governor. They want to thank you. And uh, I'm going to bring my sidekick up here. She's a lot better with numbers. She can tell you what kind of effect we're having on tourism in West Virginia. But it all started with this guy. And we're, we're just, uh, we're, under his directive, we've been able to do a lot of good work. And, and, and we're going to do four more years of good work. So thank you. All right. I am so happy to be here today. I will always take an excuse to come to Tucker County in the fall. So it's lovely to be here. Um, I want to give a shout out to all the tourism folks. I called Jessica Waldo at the CVB yesterday and said, the governor's coming to town. Do you think you can get a couple of the local tourism folks and local officials here? And she always helps me out. So thanks to all of you. Um, this is a community who knows and understands tourism. And we appreciate the hospitality that you guys provide to visitors each and every day. Guys, I'm here to tell you, Governor Justice is the most unbelievable advocate for the tourism industry that West Virginia has ever had. I do lots of calls and work with my counterparts in, every, in all the states, and West Virginia right now is the envy of all those states. When he came into office, he said, we have got to turn this industry around. The industry had been declining for several years, and we've turned it around. The West Virginia tourism industry brings in $4.6 billion each year, and we employ 400, or sorry, 45,000 hardworking West Virginians. So on behalf of all of those folks, Governor, I want to say thank you for everything you've done. We have tripled our marketing budget. For years and years, we were behind. Like the governor said, we didn't tell our story. We weren't able to get out there and market and promote ourselves. Today, we're doing that, and it's working. But we're also doing the part that's even harder than that. We're building up the infrastructure. These parks, like Stephen said, they hadn't seen money to do real investments and improvements in years and years, and $100 million. You think about that number, $100 million that's going into these parks for West Virginians just like you guys to enjoy every day. Additionally, I also want to say we're seeing more private investment than we've ever seen before. So shout out to Jonathan from Perfect North. 
They're investing over at Timberline Mountain. We are so excited to have you. Welcome to the Valley, welcome to West Virginia. Um, but it's folks like you who are helping us grow this industry even more. So Governor, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for letting West Virginia be the state that all the other states are looking for and for getting us to this point. become the diamond in the rough that everybody missed. You see, before, and and like it or not like it, and you know, but our image was dark and maybe a little dusty, or maybe maybe people really thought we had to kill a deer every day just to feed the kids at school, you know, or whatever the situation was, you know. Maybe we were in a race all the time to see who was going to be dead last, either us or Mississippi. And and then all of a sudden we started really changing. But when you change, you really change that image. All of a sudden everybody everybody has to either say, well, either we were wrong or we missed something. And what they basically are said is we missed that diamond in the rough that was located within a rock throw of two thirds of the population of the whole country. I mean, it's you. Not only that, when they get to know you, when they see you, and they really, really get to know you, what do they see about West Virginians? They always see the same thing. Okay. They always see this, and then I'll be quiet. They always see people that are loving people, but people that are appreciative people. People that really are appreciative of Jonathan, appreciative of what's going on. That's us. Now, that, that isn't that way everywhere, but it's us. People that give us and provide us opportunities and jobs and all that, that's us. We are loving. We are caring. We're low crime. We're faith-based, and we're craftsmen. And absolutely, we're great, great, great neighbors. And so when all that goes together and they see you, you become the resource, not all of our natural resources, not all of our beautiful seasons, but you become the miracle. You do. I've known it all along. And really and truly, I've believed it all along. You see, and I'm not just blowing smoke because I don't really care if you believe this or not because I know it. I know it in my heart. But here's what I know. I don't want anything being your governor. I never have. All I want is goodness for you. And I mean it. Now, politicians say that all the time. But really and truly, that's exactly what I want. I want goodness for West Virginians. And absolutely, I've always thought you were the best. I've always thought this state was the best. And the only reason in the world I ever ran is it was a crying, pitiful shame that we couldn't be the best. And we aren't the best in every category, but we're on our way. And we're on our way in a good way. So I just absolutely appreciate you every day. I'm telling you, it's a tough job. This governor gig is, <laughs> at times, it's awful. You know? But at the same time, we're going to keep at it. We're going to keep at it as hard as we can go. Anyway, thank you a bunch for everything.